Uh, good morning, everybody. <clears throat> um, just an introduction. I've been with Click Software for over six years, and during that time, I've had the pleasure of working uh, in different leadership roles in the organization, and I've worked on more than 30 mobilization projects um, throughout Europe and, uh, and in Russia. Um, mobilization projects are um, unique in that they give the business an opportunity to transform the way that they engage with their customers. And uh, they, because it's a mobilization project, they engage their workforce. And, and if you can imagine people being in the field and that um, they're moving away from a paper system or from previous technologies, their view into all the three upstream systems that they have where they get their data can be quite small. It can be limited to a device not, not much bigger than that or it can be onto a laptop giving them specific uh, access to data. So it presents a number of challenges on how to drive efficiency, how to engage on the workforce, and how to bring them forward onto a journey. So uh, I'll bring some of that out as we discuss about uh, uh, Portugal Telecom. Okay, first of all, just so that you have some context of who we are as an organization, um, we are a mature organization. We're a software development company. We've been in business for more than 20 years. And uh, we are recognized as a leader in mobile workforce management. And also now, we are on the Magic Quadrant um, as a niche player on the mobile platform focused at the mobilization of, workforce, um, of the workforce. Um, we, um, we're a profitable organization. We're completely debt-free. We operate uh, around the world. And the key thing is that we operate with key partners such as IBM and Accenture so that when they go through large programs, like, for example, at OI, where you have to mobilize more than 30,000 uh, workers, um, you need a strong systems integrator that's able to build the infrastructure and make that a successful project. OK. To put some context... Um, when you mobilize a workforce, there are many things to consider in terms of how you're aggregating data from back-end systems. It's not sufficient to just simply present the application in the field, i.e. present an ERP system view, present the asset management view. You have to consider how you're going to take the data, um, place that into an appropriate workflow such that people have access to the right type of data and that may be uh, amalgamating data to provide a higher... Uh, a higher perspective of records, having access to history, etc., and making sure that the work is efficiently distributed out. Um, and that's what these central parts here are all about. It's about really how you start to, to build upon your, um, your back-end systems, build upon your business processes. But ultimately, within mobile now, um, once you get out into the field, it's about how do you make your employees efficient. And you'll see within Portugal Telecom, it was that drive to make people efficient um, as well as uh, making them effective. So efficient, they're able to conduct the work um, in a timely fashion. Effective, they're able to get the work done first time, uh, fixed rates, which are important. Okay, so bring it down just a little bit level, a little bit lower so you have some context of the applications we'll be talking about. Uh, this, is, uh, um, this is Mike, and uh, this is Mike's smartphone, and as you can see, he's used to downloading apps, and in the consumer world, we're all used to downloading apps, and it's great. Apps look very innovative. They give us great um, personal productivity gains, but when you move into the enterprise, you know that you have challenges. The apps on their own aren't sufficient because you need to have access to data. When you're doing business to employee projects, you need to make sure that you're bringing your data efficiently, securely, and safely from the appropriate upstream systems um, to the person uh, in the field. Um, you need to make sure that your apps interwork. Apps on your smartphone, your personal apps, don't interwork. They might link up with Facebook, but that's not interworking. So you need to make sure that as you're building your, uh, your business apps, as you'll see with Portugal Telecom, that they interact, they share data, um, and that they're seamless. You don't have people jumping in and out of business apps. You want a seamless process, and you want the technology to carry the burden of, uh, of, of the administration. So to support the mobilization of the workforce, the approach that we took, and you'll see with Portugal Telecom, is that we built an app store with more than 150 different business apps. Those are not accessed by Mike in the field. They're accessed by the administrators of the system. 
they're able to bring down things like timesheets and um, uh, health and safety forms, etc., plug them together into a studio environment. So you have a studio environment that you can build tools efficiently without having to do programming. You just snap things together and build workflows that you can then publish out. However, because we provide enterprise-based applications that Portugal Telecom and OI and others have leveraged, then it's important that um, we recognize that they will go beyond the standard requirements of our application, of the apps. So we create a framework where people can develop and they can extend those through, through um, coding and extend the data model in a very efficient way. That enables you to then just publish out because it's all done in a HTML5 environment, which is device agnostic. So you can just publish out to new workflows, new procedures to people in the field um, without them having to come back and stage their devices, which is important for productivity. Okay, so in summary, that gives you the ability to, to develop rapidly and configure, to code where you wish to, uh, extend the functionality, um, and then they're easy and ready to use and publish. Okay, we've done this for many organizations around the world, um, and we have, I, I believe we have in the order of 500,000 uh, engineers around the world that are using our technology um, to drive that efficiency. Right, Portugal Telecom. So, we started working with Portugal Telecom back in 2008. Um, Portugal Telecom, um, a, they are um, a global operator, but in, in Portugal they were a traditional um, telco, the national telco. They, they really were not in a good position. When, um, when I spoke with the, the board members and we discussed a number of things in terms of the transformation project they were going through, the challenge they had was that they were traditional PT. They, they were providing uh, broadband services, they were providing um, telephone services, but the competition were new entrants that were coming in. They were the disruptive force which was attacking their market because they were providing over-the-top providers that were providing digital TV content and then the provision of the digital TV content leveraging their fiber network, their broadband network, they were then in a deregulated world able to sell their broadband services, sell their own talk plans and effectively take market share away from Portugal Telecom. So Portugal Telecom had to make a decision. Did they want to stay as they were or did they want to transfer, form their organization? They took the decision that they would transfer, transform their organization and they would move from having a culture of being a traditional telco to becoming a digital TV provider that also managed the infrastructure. Now, they took that strategy because they recognized that the battle was around customer service, the battle was around providing innovative content that people wanted to consume. Now, the workforce, because the biggest part of that is great, you can sit there as an executive and you can say, right, this is our strategy. You can then work through on your business place to be able to do your funding for the appropriate new technologies that you'll need, your, your rights um, in terms of content publishing rights, etc. But you need to transform the organization. You need to change your traditional workforce and your suppliers, and you need to engage with your customers in a different way. Now, they had uh, almost 4,500 engineers as a combination of direct employees and subcontractors. So first decision they had to make at a business level is, do they run their customer service organization purely based on SLAs? I.e., I pass my work out to my subcontractors, you have to respond within a set period of time. If you don't respond, I'll penalize you because that's what's in the contract. That is how a number of organizations run their subcontracting uh, um, arrangements. That's great if you just want to reduce cost. It's not good if you want to innovate service. So Portugal Telecom decided they would take their contractors on the journey with them, which meant that they would uh, change their contracts, they would provide them access to all the infrastructure that they needed, and they would ensure that their contractors complied with the same customer-centric processes that they put in place for their employees. Um, in order to achieve the transformation of driving efficiency to the field, uh, with Portugal Telecom, uh, we had to work to bring data from more than 20 upstream systems. Uh, that's, uh, uh, it was important to be able to access not just um, customer data, but also billing data, technical data, 
um, being able to connect devices in the field um, so that when an engineer appeared on site um, to connect a digital service, that they had all of the tools available in their hand, being able to do end-to-end -end testing, uh, being able to do initiate diagnostics from their device into the, into the upstream systems um, to prove the lines would work through, being able to order spares, being able to um, um, escalate and get support. Uh, all of those things are happening through there. And in order to make sure that people can, are empowered to deliver service, it was ours and our partner Accenture's job to make sure that we built those working processes and workflows out onto the mobile devices. Part of the key element of transforming a workforce is how do you train your employees? How do you empower them with knowledge? One way is to bring them, as they traditionally did, into um, offline training and regularly go through offline training. Um, for Portugal Telecom, because the journey was so great and because the constant release of technology was important to their strategy, the approach they took was to, to um, mobilize training. So the creation of bite-sized training modules that were distributed at the right time to engineers in line with when the technology, different technologies were going to be made available in their areas. So what we were able to do was ensure that the engineer had downtime, so they would have an hour in their day scheduled to go through a particular training module. At the end of the training module, they would be tested. If they were passed the test, they were then allowed to go and have more work. If they didn't pass the test, they were kept off the road until they did pass the test, and it was flagged for management for, for additional intervention and support. So that way, they were able to take their they effectively take their employees on this journey to absorb this new technology, be very focused on delivering service with their customers. So as we touched on, um, they use the applications to build uh, tools on the mobile devices that enabled them to interact with their systems, to um, drive diagnostics, drive enablement in the field. They're able to deliver training. Um, they're able to deliver training in the field. Um, we help them drive their business forward by creating cross-sell and upsell applications so that when the engineer was on site and had resolved a problem, at that point they had achieved the point of having a trusted advisor status with the customer. By um, uh, passing through uh, dynamically passing through appropriate questions to ask to collect data relevant to the type of service that they had, they were able to either sell on premise or they're able to collect the data and pass it back and somebody would follow up from the contact center uh, and call in. And then distribution of knowledge, um, making available to engineers a very rich um, archive of, uh, of um, product information, tech, tips uh, from, their, from their peers, encouraging people to be able to add knowledge articles um, and work in a community sense. So these are just some of the capabilities that uh, we were able to uh, provide for Portugal Telecom. Now, it was, a, it was a big infrastructure project. The elapsed time, it was over 13 months. Um, the interesting period is that we, we took um, um, really around five months to design the solutions for them. We then spent another four months uh, developing those. And the rest of the time, the uh, integration into the upstream systems, as you can imagine, because they had to go live with everything. They didn't have an option not to go live with everything. Um, and then there was the testing and then the rollout. Um, now, to roll out was, was aggressive. We were rolling out at... Um, uh, we were rolling out at around uh, 500 engineers in groups areas um, every two weeks. So you can imagine the impact on the organization as you're as you are constantly moving them through into a, a, new, uh, a new environment, a working environment. So the key benefits. Um, by being able to create a customer-centric service organization, uh, Portugal Telecom were able to reduce um, complaints by more than 50%. That was at the beginning of the project and they've continued to enhance their systems and that's gone down. By dropping the no-show, so, so the element of where the engineer missed the appointment to visit with the customer, um, by having the right systems in place, 
the right visibility and real-time control uh, by being able to um, uh, notify people where, of changes of appointment from the field and mobile devices, then they were able to reduce their side of the no-shows by more than 70%. Now, that has a big impact in terms of customer satisfaction. Um, significant reduction in overtime costs with 4,500 engineers, um, a 15% reduction in overtime costs ran into to multiple millions and had a massive impact on, the, on their, um, their ability to um, uh, profitability. And they were also able to um, uh, negotiate down the rates from their subcontractors because they provided an infrastructure where their subcontractors could be more efficient. Uh, seamless integration to more than 20 systems. So we talked about um, the important thing on a mobile project for mobile workers is making sure that you get the right data uh, to uh, the right people and um, that you build out multiple workflows depending on the type of activities you're asking them to perform. So it's not just a static set of forms. They're dynamic. It's not a static pro one pro work process does all. You present the appropriate work, um, workflow with the right work um, that enables somebody to be very, very successful. Um, what I will do is I'm going to just wrap up at this point and, uh, and, and I won't go through the other, other element of the case study. The 15 minutes has gone very fast. What I would say is um, uh, this afternoon in one of the sessions, um, the Environment Agency will be presenting. Uh, John will be presenting their journey, and I was involved with that, um, that project, how they went from a, uh, a manual dispersed, um, organiza a dispersed organization, had completely manual processes, completely paper-based systems, um, and they were able to embrace a mobile application where they could do water sampling in a more efficient way, they were able to, to create a national organization from a, from a very regional organization. Um, and they were able to improve the quality of sampling by geocoding where they took samples from, doing just the right number of samples. And if there were needs to go back, they were able to, to go back to the precise point. So I would encourage you all to go and see John. I would encourage you to come and see us in the corner and have a chat about mobilization. And uh, thank you very much for your time.